Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa Welcome to another episode where we're going to speak about the lives of the prophets. And today we're going to be, speak about Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam again. The reason we have to cover, cover Ibrahim in two sessions is because his life his, is, mashallah, such a long life of tests and dawah and so many life lessons we can learn in his, and, and so many important lessons and significant lessons in his life. And today we're going to speak about the formation of Mecca. Now, many people think, when they think of Mecca, they think of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But you'll be surprised to know that Mecca began with Prophet Ibrahim and the building of the Kaaba. So let's get into it, inshallah. Ibrahim, as we mentioned last time, he was given a son, subhanAllah. His wife, Sarah, was barren. She couldn't have children. They were trying to have children for many years. And Sarah, out of the love of Ibrahim, knew that he really wanted a son. And of course, this is the dream of most men. They want children and, and daughters, sons and daughters. And of course, Ibrahim, he mentions so many times, uh, he's mentioned in the Quran, where he's making dua for his progeny, not just his immediate children, but his whole progeny. And Allah blessed him because of who he is, his status. As we, as we mentioned last time, he is named the Khalil of Allah, the friend of Allah. And all the tests that he went through, Allah blessed him with a righteous progeny. And as we know, he had two sons. He had Ishmael and Ishaq. And we're going to speak about the lineage of the progeny in, a, in another episode. But today, we're speaking about Ismail. Now, Ismail was actually, subhanAllah, uh, he was the son that was given to his second wife, Hajja. So, Hajja was uh, Ibrahim's second wife. And when Hajja had Ismail, Sarah was a bit jealous. And this is natural. It's natural for every woman, if she loves her husband, to be jealous. There's nothing wrong with that. And subhanAllah, Ibrahim had to separate them, put them in separate cities. And as we mentioned, Hajj uh, and Ibrahim went to the desert and went to where modern day Mecca is today. Now at the time, Mecca was not this big city with AC and running water and marble mosque and beautiful, you know, uh, cool marble, you know, what you stand on today. It doesn't even get hot. At the time of Ibrahim, the desert was barren. There was nothing there, subhanAllah. There was no water. There was no buildings. And Ibrahim was in the desert with his wife, Hajjah. And Allah ordered him to leave his wife and son in the desert. Now think about this test, subhanAllah. Ibrahim was longing for a son for so many years. He's now an old man. And finally he's given a son. And he's told by Allah, leave your son in the desert with no water. Now of course, you're going to imagine... Your, not only is your son, but your wife is going to pass away. But Allah gave him Iman and Ibrahim had trust in him. And even Hajja, the Ibrahim told his wife and Hajja asked him, Is Allah ordering you to leave us? And Ibrahim said yes. And Hajja said no problem. And she trusted Allah. So Ibrahim left Hajja and Ismail in the desert for some time. SubhanAllah. And... At the time, there's no water. So Hajjah was panicking. You know, she, of course, she trusted Allah, but at the same time, she has to seek the means of survival. She starts to run between the famous mountains of Mecca, Safa and Marwa. She's running up and down, looking for water, looking on the tops of the mountains, trying to see if she can see any water. And she couldn't see anything. SubhanAllah. She couldn't even see a mirage. SubhanAllah. That's how difficult it was. There wasn't even a hope of water. And she's running between the mountains and finally she settles with her son and Allah gives her the miracle where the water starts to form and the water's gushing of the Zamzam, what is now the Zamzam well. And Hajjah says, Zamzam. She says, stop. She orders, she tells the, you know, the water to stop because it was coming so much. SubhanAllah. And this is where the Zamzam well uh, was originated. Uh, you know, there was a miracle of Hajjah, subhanAllah. So this was the beginnings of, uh, you know, Mecca. Hajjah was living in Mecca. She now had a water well. They start to live in that area. And Ibrahim would come back uh, from time to time, visit his family, you know, and then he would visit his other family, uh, Sarah. 
And the interesting thing is at the same time after Ismail was born, now Sarah is also blessed with a son, uh, Ishaq, subhanAllah. And Sarah couldn't believe it. She's like, she was actually told that she's going to have a son, Ishaq. And she's amazed. She was laughing. She said, how can an old woman like me have a son, subhanAllah. And, uh, you know, she's told she's going to have, have uh, Ishaq. And after him, she's going to have uh, Yaqub. And this is very interesting, just a subtle point. In Hebrew, Ishaq means la to laugh, subhanAllah. And in the ayah, Sarah laughed. And it says, and after him, Yaqub. And Yaqub in Hebrew also means after him, subhanAllah. Very nice, subtle point. But the point is that uh, Sarah was also told that she's going to have Isaac and also he's also going to have righteous descendants. So, Ibrahim and his family, Hajar, are in the desert. Now, the next test of Ibrahim, as we said, he's been given sons, he's been given family, he's been tested to leave his son and his, and his wife in the desert. And alhamdulillah, they survived. Allah gave them miracles, He gave them water, gave them protection. And now, subhanAllah, ultimately, he is tested with one of the biggest tests that any prophet has ever been tested with. And Allah ordered him to sacrifice his son, subhanAllah. Now, there's difference of opinion on which son uh, Ibrahim was ordered to sacrifice. Some scholars say it was Ismail, some say it was Isaac. Ultimately, it's not named in the Islamic sources. But as I mentioned, Sarah was told that she's going to have a son, you know, and his name will be, is going to be called Isaac, and he will have a son called Jacob. So, it, you know, Sarah knew that Isaac would grow up and, and become a, uh, you know, an adult and have children. So it's most probably that it was Ismail who was the one who, was, who Ibrahim had been told to sacrifice. And, and Ibrahim, according to the Islamic narrative, tells his son, Ismail, that he's had this dream and Ismail knows that Ibrahim is a prophet and the dreams of the prophet is revelation and Ibrahim himself also submits to Allah and he tells Ibrahim, do it, you know, do what Allah has told you to do. So Ibrahim is about to sacrifice his son and Allah stops it and of course replaces it with a ram, gives him a ram to sacrifice and ultimately it was all a test to see if Ibrahim would submit to Allah. Of course, Allah didn't want him to kill his son, but it's a test of submission. So many lessons uh, within this. So then, Ibrahim and his son started to build the Kaaba. This was now the first place of worship dedicated to the worship of Allah, to pure monotheism on the planet. So Ibrahim and his father, they built the Kaaba. As they was building it, they was making dua, there was making a lot of du'a, and as, as the Kaaba would get built up, Ibrahim, uh, Ismail would pass the bricks to uh, Ibrahim, and they built the Kaaba, the first place of worship, the central place where all, all the believers who truly believe in true monotheism uh, were praying in that, you can call it a mosque, the first house of worship, subhanAllah. And this became known as Bayt Allah, the house of Allah, because it was built by Ibrahim for the purpose of, of worshipping Allah. So subhanAllah, now you, so you have all the things coming together now. You have the house, the first place of worship, Mecca. You have the Zamzam well, you have the water. And now Allah orders Ibrahim to call people to the pilgrimage, subhanAllah. Ibrahim was the first prophet to be commanded to tell the people to come and perform pilgrimage at the sacred house of Mecca. So Ibrahim called the people far and wide and Allah promised Ibrahim that people will be coming from all over the world, through the valleys, through all the different places on, on horseback and walking. People are going to be coming and for all time and performing this pilgrimage. And of course, when we look today, we have millions of people traveling by air, by sea, by land, by even train to perform the pilgrimage, subhanAllah. And truly that promise has come to pass where, uh, subhanAllah, millions of people every year go and perform the pilgrimage. And even the lesser pilgrimage of the Umrah, there's so many people from all over the world go and perform. They spend their hard-earned money going 
to seek forgiveness and, and want to worship Allah and make dua in that blessed place of Mecca. So subhanAllah, Ibrahim was truly blessed with uh, being the father of the pilgrimage and of course the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, revived that pilgrimage. At the time of Muhammad وسلم, the pagans did have, they still had remnants of the pilgrimage. They were still performing some of the pilgrimage, you know, circulating the Kaaba, going to Arafat, certain things. But they forgot a lot of the truth. Of course, they were not worshipping Allah uh, in a pure sense. They were also seeking help through idols. So this is the biggest problem of the pagans. Um, but they did have a form of pilgrimage. And of course, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, comes, he purifies that pilgrimage and reinstates it back to the same pilgrimage of Ibrahim with the remembrance of uh, Allah, uh, the way that Ibrahim uh, performed the pilgrimage. So subhanAllah, the pilgrimage has such an important role in our lives because it is the fifth pillar of Islam. And the day of Arafat, uh, which is the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah, is the day of Hajj. This is the day when people go to the mountain of Arafat to seek forgiveness from Allah. This is where people go, they spend the whole day in Arafat making dua, asking for forgiveness and uh, this is the main day of the Hajj. And of course, this is also the day uh, where the famous ayah was revealed that Allah says that today is the day that I have completed my favour upon you. You know, completed the religion, uh, you know, to you know, delivered the religion to you and completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam as a religion. Subhanallah. This is such an important ayah. Even the Yahud at the time recognized the significance of this ayah. They said to one of the Sahaba that if, if this had been revealed to us, we would be celebrating. Subhanallah. They knew the significance of this ayah that there was no doubt about Islam now. The religion is complete, it's all there. You don't have to add to it, you don't have to take away, it's clear, it's been made clear by Allah and His Messenger through the Qur'an and the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, the religion is complete. We're not left guessing or thinking, uh, you know, what is the right way. And the, the previous nations before, they lost their scriptures, they lost their Aqidah even, and, and they didn't know what to do. They were like uh, lost sheep, basically, they were, they were lost sheep, <laughs> you know. Uh, where the Muslim Subhana, we've been given a, a very detailed guidance in the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is the significance of Arafat. You know, that, that is the day when Allah chosen the, the, the finalization of Islam. And of course, that's the day when we all seek forgiveness and hope for the hereafter, SubhanAllah. Just a few final points regarding Ibrahim. That Allah tells us he was not Jewish or Christian. He was a Muslim. Uh, you know... Uh, this is very significant because Judaism and Christianity came after Ibrahim. Ibrahim was following the correct religion of God, which is Islam. And of course, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, you know, on his night journey, he met Prophet Ibrahim ﷺ. Of course, he also met Musa. Musa was uh, encouraging the Prophet ﷺ to try to decrease the Salah, okay, because of make it easier for our Ummah. Where Ibrahim alayhi salam, he, he, he greeted us and told the Prophet to greet us and also to tell us about paradise, subhanAllah. That the plants of paradise grow with our dhikr. You know, our remembrance of Allah, the plants in paradise grow, subhanAllah. And Ibrahim specifically wanted uh, the Prophet وسلم, to communicate that to us, to, to give us hope in the hereafter. This is the final dawah of Ibrahim, if you like, where even in the, in the, in the Barzak, Ibrahim is giving us dawah, encouraging us to go to uh, paradise, encouraging us, uh, giving us visuals, if you like, of uh, you know, what to expect in paradise and giving us hope that, inshallah, we will go to paradise, inshallah. And uh, the famous uh, story uh, on Judgment Day, where Ibrahim comes into contact with his father and he said to his father, did I not tell you to obey me, subhanAllah? And his father said, I will obey you. But of course it's too late. His father was a non-Muslim and uh, Allah, uh, Ibrahim asks Allah, you know, to forgive his father and, it, and, and, and Allah says, you know, even the status of Ibrahim, 
he cannot forgive his father because if you die a non-Muslim, there's no, uh, of course, if you die rejecting Islam, I should say, um, there's no hope for you. Of course, if you die a non-Muslim and you've not heard about the message, that's something different. There's a chance of a test and a day of judgment. But if you've ignored Islam and denied Islam, there's absolutely no uh, hope of forgiveness. And uh, Ibrahim turned round and subhanAllah, he saw that his father had been turned into an animal, uh, what resembled uh, like a hyena with blood on his face. It was a complete humiliation for Ibrahim's father. But of course, uh, Allah was punishing his father for the humiliation that he made Ibrahim go through, throwing him in the fire, threatening him with death, not supporting him, subhanAllah. So when we look at the life of Ibrahim, as Allah tells us, Ibrahim was truly an example for us. He was one of the best examples. He was devoutly obedient to Allah and he was true in faith, subhanAllah. Ibrahim was truly one of the, uh, one of the, uh, you know, the, the, the great messengers of Allah. And with there's so many lessons that we can learn through his life. And I hope this can revive our, our love for Ibrahim. And every day when we're making salah and we're told and we have to make dua for Ibrahim and his progeny and his people that we remember and we internalize some of these life tests that he went through, subhanAllah, and remember the status of Ibrahim. Don't just skip through it. You know, when you're making dua for Ibrahim, remember him, who he was. And this, the likewise, remember who the Prophet ﷺ was, that they really did uh, secure the monotheism and the Tawheed and the religion of Islam for us later generations, that we can enjoy the fruits of having Islam, you know, on a plate, you know, all set for us. We just follow it and inshallah, we go to paradise. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining me. Join us next time. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.